You have probably heard that a particle can be in a combination of multiple states at once. That's called quantum superposition, one of the most commonly misunderstood topics in quantum mechanics. In this video, I'll try to clarify what superposition is, what it isn't, and trace the very origins of this strange and powerful idea in physics. Stick around till the end where I'll try to clarify some misconceptions about superposition and the role of consciousness. Let's dive straight into it. Let's start simple. In quantum mechanics, the state of a particle is described by something called a wave function. This idea was discussed in detail in one of our previous videos. And recently, we also took a deep dive into the Schrodinger equation. It's the equation used to determine the wave function of a quantum particle. A key property of the Schrodinger equation is that it is linear. Linearity means that if two wave functions are valid solutions, then any linear combination of them is also a valid solution. Feel free to pause here to read the proof. And this is where the principle of superposition comes from. If states A and B are two valid states for a particle to be in, then quantum mechanics says that it can also be in a state denoted by psi A plus psi B, since this is also a solution to the Schrodinger equation. But why don't we have superpositions in classical physics? Here's the big difference. In classical physics, objects always have definite properties. A football is either here or there. It has one position, one momentum, one state at a time. More precisely, the state of a classical particle is given by two things, its position and its momentum. But here's the thing, you can't meaningfully add two classical states together. If one possible state is xapa and another is xbpb, then adding them just gives a new point xa plus xb, pa plus pb. But this new point doesn't necessarily have any physical meaning in classical mechanics. In contrast, the quantum states are represented by wave functions. These live in a special kind of a mathematical space called a Hilbert space. Here, Adding two states together doesn't just give a new number, it gives a whole new state with its own physical reality. And that's what we call a superposition. And again, the superposition of states is a valid physical reality due to the fact that it also satisfies the Schrodinger equation, which is something we saw earlier. So the reason we don't see superposition in classical physics is simply that classical systems aren't built on a mathematical structure where adding states even means anything physically. Now you may ask, what does a superposition actually look like in the real world? Well, we don't really see superpositions directly. When we observe a quantum system, say we measure the spin of an electron, we always find one result, even though the electron is in a superposition of states. According to the Copenhagen interpretation, if the electron exists in a superposition, then the act of measurement causes the wave function to collapse into one of the possible outcomes. It must be mentioned that there are other interpretations too, and if you guys are up for it, I am more than happy to discuss them in the comments below. So, don't be afraid to share your thoughts. Now, let's clear up a couple of common misconceptions. But before that, if you like this video, why not smash that like button? First, a superposition isn't both states at the same time in the classical sense. You've probably heard of Schrodinger's cat, the famous thought experiment where a cat is supposedly in a superposition of being both alive and dead. But it's not like the cat is in some half-zombie state. But it's also not just one or the other state, because after the measurement, the system truly has the potential to become either outcome. So the correct way to think of superposition 
is that it is a state which, upon observation, can collapse to either outcome. Second, observation doesn't mean a human staring at it. An observation can be any interaction with a detector, a sensor or even the environment itself. Consciousness is not required for collapse, at least not according to the mainstream physics view. Though I am aware that there are many theories in this regard. If you know of some fascinating ones, be sure to comment down below. I hope to learn something from you guys as well. If you watch the video carefully, you might have noticed that the concept of superposition originates from the Schrodinger equation. To truly gain a deep understanding of this phenomenon, I would suggest you to watch my video on the Schrodinger equation, which is central to understanding not only superposition but almost every concept in quantum physics. If you found this useful, don't forget to leave a like and share it with your friends and I'll see you in the next one.